Welcome to Ancestral Health Today, evolutionary insights into modern health. Welcome to the Ancestral Health Today podcast. And today with us, we have uh, Miguel Casali. He's a medical doctor who practices in Ireland and Spain. Welcome, Dr. Casali. Uh, really glad to have you with us. Thank you very much, Isabel. Thanks for having me here. Yes, absolutely. So I'd like to have uh, the guests uh, do their own extensive introductions. And it really helps the public, you know, get to know where your mindset comes from and what your thought process is when we go a little bit back. So tell me a little bit about, um, you know, how you decided to become a doctor even. Okay, I am Miguel Casale. I, I was born in Pamplona in Spain, a small town in the north of Spain, maybe well known for the wool running. Uh, and uh, well, uh, I was just uh, living in, in this quiet town all my life. And, and well, uh, I have no tradition about medicine in my family at all. So when I was um, in the last year of my studies, I can't even tell you how was it. But I, I felt I, I had to, to, to try to, to be a doctor. And, and definitely now I really know uh, why was that. But there were no tradition. And, and wow, and, and so on. And during my studies, I, I really enjoyed them a lot. I started to love medicine. But until the last year, I didn't realize my real, real vocation was to work in the community, to be a family doctor, not to go for our hospitals. So uh, in Spain, we, we pass a, a quite interesting heart exam called MIR, M-I-R. And then when you pass this exam, you can choose to be a specialist. And uh, well, I, I, it, it was uh, a heart exam. I, I, I was the, the number 548, uh, and uh, there were more than 18,000 candidates. And I decided to choose uh, family medicine, uh, when I could have, have chosen many, many specialists, uh, specialties, uh, cardiology, dermatology, any of them. But I, I, I really mm, realized I, I wanted to be a family doctor, and and this is what I, I've been really preparing to, uh, striving to be in the in the last three decades, a uh, general practitioner, family doctor in Spain. The training of family doctors is very, very good. And, and then it hasn't been so easy to practice medicine. So uh, uh, in Spain, in the decades of the 1990s and the beginning of, uh, of the 21st century, there were there was no jobs, no job for for the doctors. It was were, were very difficult times, and I think also this these times like uh, make me like uh, uh, be very conscious about uh, how really I I wanted to be a family doctor. Um. So how is uh, medicine in Spain uh, maybe different from medicine in the United States? Um, what type of situations are you seeing with, uh, within your family medicine practice? Um, what are some of the frustrations that you get? Well, uh, family medicine in Spain is, is, uh, is, uh, a, is a public, 100% uh, public for, I mean, Universal and public for the population. This is characteristic, and also it's very characteristic. The doctors are salaried. We work for the government, and we are salaried. This is very good for the population, and this is also very good for the standards of the medicine we we give. On the other hand, uh, I can tell you that uh, when you are working more than two decades, three decades, you also feel that uh, sometimes you can't do many things you'd like to do inside the public systems because the, there are some limits regarding the management, regarding the, sometimes more the it's a political uh, management, more, more than a clinical management or a health, ma health public health management. And so, uh, well, it's, it's comfortable you have your salary, but for example, <laughs> regarding other countries, you, you can't choose the people you work with. So you are civil servant. You, you work in a civil service. And so um, now I am working in Ireland, and I'll, I'll tell that later. So you realize the goods, the good things and the things that are not so good of our Spanish system. 
so uh, I think it. Uh, I can tell you, it, it has been hard to to not to be able to work uh, every every day because there were no jobs in Spain. <laughs> it's difficult to to believe that for a for a medical doctor, but it was true. It was 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 real, and uh, and then uh, I think uh, to to finish already the. I do can't create inside the public system as much as you'd like. So it's it's more protocols, public health, or or mm, it's very well organized, but uh, it's not as creative as I'd like. Yeah, and I think uh, uh, I like to be creative in my profession. Yeah, that's that's. Although we don't have a public health system, we have the same limitations with. Uh, the insurance bottles that we have, which the doctors are confined to only what is approved, what's in the guidelines, what is, you know, tiered um, into the insurance model. So it is, it can be very frustrating. Um, so how has that helped you evolve in the type of medicine that you practice? I find the, there is a, a very interesting model of family medicine developed in Spain in the 1980s after the Alma Ata WHO meeting uh, starting the primary health care. This is around the 1970s. So I, th uh, I think I, 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 I joined in the, the, the practice of medicine at the early, in the early 90s, 1990s, when in Spain was just after the, the in, in, in Spain, I, many, many, many people don't know, in the 1970s, we changed it from a dictatorship to a democracy. <laughs> so, uh, in the just as it's, it's hard to believe, but I I was born in a in a in Franco's dictatorship, and so in in, a, in the 1980s we we were just uh, starting to to dream with everything public, everything for everybody, just about democracy, and 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 uh, together with the beginning of the primary care. Uh, and the um, family medicine at the at the biosocial, uh, biopsychosocial medicine, in, as primary care. And, and, and when I started to to listen about, uh, wow, biopsychosocial. This is really what I love. Real, this is really my understanding of the of the medicine. This 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 model, not only biological. And so uh, um, there is a, a very interesting person like uh, called Amando Martin Zurro and has a very very good uh, book in primary care called Martin Zurro. And uh, wow, they are they explain very well all the systemic, the interactions of everything uh, and the, uh, the, the person, the, 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 the atom, the, the molecule, the, the cell, the tissue, the organ, the body, and then the, the, the family, the community, all this, we are all interacting. So this uh, this systemic model of medicine really fascinated me, and uh, and this is the the, the one I'm, I I am yet uh, uh, looking for because I, I I really I really love it. And in Spain, I think uh, there are many many places where you can you can feel this this school of of medicine is is powerful, and uh, and so uh, I think I I was like surfing this wave of uh, of this. Uh, post Alma Ata conference, starting the biopsychosocial model, and then the practice of the family medicine in Spain in the 1990s was really my is really my my background. So what brought you to also practice in Ireland? So uh, well when when you get a, a permanent position in Spain and you are like me in the in the early 50s like as I was at the, you used to say, oh no well, the the stimul is not so stimulant, so it's already all done. So, uh, and you're starting to to join your colleagues, and you say, "Oh, we are in the the beginning of mid mid fifties, uh, and uh, we maybe you you have you have some dreams you haven't been able to 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 get, and you know in this system you won't be able to get, and uh, and the conversations start to go up, starts to be around." Well, uh, we are burn out, uh, just uh, calculating the, the the months and years for the retirement, uh, talking about pensions, and you say, "Oh, I love medicine." So, and also, medicine is definitely changing so much. I think the the, the, decade, the second decade of the twenty first century, you start to realize 
with, because of the technology of, of many things. And, and of course, after COVID, after COVID, start to realize that many things were changing in the in the, in the medical profession. And you say, oh, am I going? Am I going to to work uh, all my life, all my professional life, like like uh, I've been working now? Or will I be able to to participate in some changes? And so on. I, I I I knew I need to practice my English. I knew to try to go to other countries to 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 practice my to practice medicine, and that's what I did in the 2021. Yeah, wonderful. So I met you um, in at Low Car Denver in Colorado um, at the um, at a group meeting that we were having for people who spoke Spanish. So what brought you to low carb Denver? I think here I kind of start to mix my professional and my personal background. <laughs> I mean, because uh, uh, from the personal background, I also come from come from a background of uh, like many people with fighting, uh, fighting with uh, or struggling to for your mental health, struggling with your weight. I, I was, I was, uh, around uh, uh, 30, 35 kilograms more just 10, five years ago. And, and well, uh, and so the com I think that from the professional point of view, Ireland gave me the opportunity to start to separate the earning of money. I can earn money in Ireland and, uh, and I, I can also, um, uh, um, I can also invest my money in my training and in my professional development that's very difficult very difficult in Spain so and from the personal point of view and um, after many years struggling with diets and with and with uh, uh, with uh, many I think I, I can tell you physical and, and, and mental problems I I started to follow the people in low carb keto community and I said oh I really I really would like to go and see what's going on in in, in USA in, in Denver in low carb and I was able to do that because I was uh, already working through my company in Ireland, not as a civil servant in Spain. Would have been impossible to do that <laughs> in my in my uh, professional status in in Spain. And and uh, I felt I needed to 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 go to this conference, and really was the starting point for many many things. And the last thing I can tell you, when I was in Denver, thirteen degrees minus zero, <laughs> uh, in a hotel in a hotel in the downtown. Waiting for the conference, I, I uh, did my strategy to communicate because I was alone, completely alone, and I I create a group in a, in an app called I think Boa or something like that. You can and I create a group for the Spanish speakers participants in local Denver, and uh, and was for me the opportunity to to meet you, for example, yes, and, and other people, other person as Mariela Glant, the Argentinian uh, who is. Uh, also working with me now in, in in projects related with low carb, and wow, I can tell you, low carb Denver was uh, like the the beginning of a of, of a new new understanding of my professional life. Wonderful. So, did your uh, weight loss journey include low carb, or is that something that you learned after? My weight loss journey started like everyone with. Uh, Yes, counting calories, exercising, uh, being hunger all day, <laughs> hungry all day, uh, spending eighty percent of your energy in in the buying buying food, uh, uh, cooking, um, uh, uh, take uh, and uh, exercising and eating five times a day. Well, uh, first of all, it's, it's a it's, it's a decision when you decide I I'm going to change. This is some, uh, this is something very deep. When you realize you you are not going to be the same anymore, and and then uh, well, uh, I th there is a very relevant person, a nutritional therapist in Spain called Salvador Talon, who started to introduce me in just such a simple theory of is this orthomolecular nutrition, where you just need to nut to eat nutrients and not toxics. So that's so simple, so simple, and uh, but uh, no one has have told you. Have told me before, and uh, even I, in studying, studying as a doctor or or what I I was doing even with my patients, 
something as simple as that, I, I, I have never done. And he started also this nutritional therapist to introduce me in the low carb, not uh, not not at, at the uh, keto extreme, but uh, in the, the of course carb, carbs should be reduced definitely. And uh, when, but then through uh, videos, YouTube videos, watching American doctors, many of them, I, I met them in, in low carb Denver, uh, and started to to watch, for example, uh, Diet Doctor Channel, Doctor Bersher, all the interviews they have. Starting to 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 note uh, the the movement in the in in UK with uh, Doctor David Alwin and and uh, well, I, I started to be fascinated and uh, and tried myself. I tried myself and uh, tried myself the low carb diets and also the fasting and and finally the keto. And uh, I can tell you, this is for me like a new life. <laughs> it's a new life because uh, it's the first time in my life I've started to feel I was able to control what I what I eat, and I was able to 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 stabilize my mainly my mind, mainly my mind. I also realized my body was quite more stable, but mainly my my mind. And, and so. Uh, uh, I can tell you everything works in the moment in every mo- in, in different moments, but finally, uh, for people rela- related more with what now can be understood as food addiction or difficult to control the impulse to to, to eat. Uh, I find the low carb keto diets uh, are very very helpful on, and for me, definitely the the lifestyle. I can follow all my life, I think. So you've been exposed to medicine in Spain. You've been exposed to medicine in Ireland. And to some degree, you've been exposed to medicine in the U.S. and, you know, the rest of the world through talking to colleagues and watching interviews and so forth. Why do you think there's such a big disconnect between practicing medicine in so many places and nutrition. Um, why do you think we've gotten in the place that we've gotten where, you know, the medical system doesn't seem to understand and, and know how to advise patients who are struggling with different metabolic issues, not not just necessarily weight, but um, yeah. So why do you think that's a problem? Well, this is a fantastic question on, on the, and you see, and you see it. I can tell you the training is very important. The, the medical training is very important. The, the content, the, the biomedical approach we, we are we are taught in the universities is uh, is uh, understand the symptoms, uh, give a name to the symptoms that diagnose and uh, and the diagnose for the doctors we are trained to to give to go straight to to some medical to some medicine so to some something the the medical system can offer. So regarding lifestyle, it's, it's not really considered a powerful tool to to work with, and uh, and for I think for many reasons because uh, the way we practice medicine with uh, uh, many patients, not many, not much time. So if you want to to really educate people, it's, it's quite difficult uh, to and uh, and then on the other hand, I think uh, mm, uh, the the nutrition regarding the macronutrients, mainly the macronutrients, uh, I think we haven't we haven't been having the right answers to to the question of which macronutrients are the best to eat, and and so uh, mm, I think uh, we are we have been taught uh, that uh, we have to eat five times a day, and uh, 550 percent of carbohydrates. As a doctor, you realize people are getting sick with this with this uh, uh, message we are giving to the patients. But uh, you are like in, in, in a is you can't even you can't even think about changing that if you are inside everyday system. I, is the, the the reasons are related to the tradition, to the training, to the how how difficult it is to to change this uh, this mentality. Uh, because uh, it's not even taught at the universities now, and it's just uh, starting to be understood. Many things just and and this is slower than all the process to 
to get the science and then put the science in in a in a in a medical in a medical uh, school, for example. So uh, it's it's a very good topic to to talk deeper, really. Um, so you touch upon um, the benefits of the low carb and keto diets for mental health, and there's a whole you know um, movement, if you will, that is um, that is named uh, metabolic psychiatry, right. new sort of branch of medicine. Um, why do you think that the keto diet is beneficial for mental health? Well, uh, my my I think my main surprise last year in low carb Denver was when I was just uh, looking there for diabetes, obesity, and some other metabolic problems. When I saw, uh, I think it's Bert Shirt uh, giving here his speaker, he's a, he's a, a speaking, and 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 I I knew very well him uh, in the uh, about uh, watching the Diet Doctor channel. And started to say, "Oh, metabolic mind, metabolic mind." Oh, Doctor Berset is a cardiologist and has is, is talking about metabolic mind. And, and I started also to realize myself the main change. I my main change was in my in my mind through the 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 the, the, uh, the abstinence of carbohydrates mainly, and uh, and so um, well. Um, uh, I I started to be fascinated about that really, and it is just one year ago. No more, and I, I, I really think it's really, really powerful the movement around the metabolic psychiatry, and uh, and well, I, I, I'm, I'm getting ready. I've bought now a course from Georgia Eat, uh, and uh, I follow Metabolic Mind Channel, and I started to be involved in some projects with my even with my family with the projects I, I'd love to be involved, but just now getting being trained, uh, I, I'm, I'm getting that the. Uh, the training and observing how powerful it is, and also it's fascinating how I in in my last uh, summer I was able to uh, I, I traveled to India. I also have met the community in India, and uh, and the people already working in powerful uh, projects in metabolic mind with uh, in another country like India, completely different. And so uh, I'm just starting to think about uh, offering services on that is complicated. It's not easy. Uh, you need uh, to be trained, uh, but uh, from my personal experience and and also uh, understanding many many medical problems, minor mental health problems I see every day in my practice, I'm sure there is a a, a powerful relationship between what you eat, between what your metabolic health, and and your mind in many many senses. Yes. Yeah, Christopher Palmer wrote the book Brain Energy, who speaks about all of this. So it's it's a really fascinating field that we've just started to tap into. Um, so how are you approaching your patients now with all of this knowledge and this new understanding and the training that you're getting? Well, uh, I continue working as a GP, as a general practitioner in Ireland. And uh, but of course, uh, it's every day I see patients with uh, blood test results uh, asking you about what to do with the diets, what to, what to do with it, with the lifestyle, and of course, when you understand the low carb approach in medicine, you see like uh, different glasses people. <laughs> uh, uh, so and uh, as of course, in my everyday practice, I am. So I can advise people about the, mainly the macronutrients because, of course, anti-inflammatory, bad quality food is, is definitely, everybody knows is bad. But uh, many people th is thinking that uh, the things they are eating are, are, are good because they are taught, uh, they have been told they have to take this, for example, fruits is very common for, for many people eating out of fruit because they think every kind of fruit is good. And, and so in, in, my, in my current practice, Every day in the GP practice, I can advise people. For example, if a person comes with a high triglycerides, uh, I, I don't tell them to reduce the fat intake. I just <laughs> I tell them to reduce the carbohydrates intake or the fructose intake. That is the is is, is what I, I now understand is is, is different. And uh, but, and then uh, I'm started to get ready to offer a metabolic care clinic 
online and maybe in a hybrid model, model in virtual virtual clinic. This is what I, I I've seen is is that is really the the, the future, uh, and um, I'm prepared. I'm just uh, getting ready to to participate myself with my company with my own self employment or or developing with other colleagues. I I I'd like to to meet. So and I but I would like to to uh, abandon the medical the routine or general medical practice because there is the place where people uh, also I. I love general practice, so and, and and you can give very good advice in general practice, but also offer for the ones who are looking for maybe a, a more more uh, relevant or more decisive uh, change in their lifestyle. To tell them, I think it's it's good to be able to offer altern the alternative for anti-inflammatory, low-carb keto diets, uh, understanding how they work, who are uh, who are mainly they from, who can do them. Uh, of course, everybody can do that, absolutely. But um, and and uh, I organize like clinics, train train myself, train other colleagues, and, and offer also the virtual practices. The um, I think the hybrid model, also being able to come face to face, but but in, in, also maybe just yes, uh, online in the because it's it's it's, it's hundred percent possible to be done online. And, uh, and offering the tools for the patients uh, to, to 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 be able to follow this this uh, this uh, lifestyle because I believe you definitely can revert the mechanisms involved in your in your in your disease mainly insulin resistance and inflammation and if you can get it uh, sustainable for months and for years the benefits are huge and uh, and uh, I this is the, the way. I love to work, but not abandoning the general practice and also trying to integrate this new science in the general practice. I think this is a challenge. It's not easy, but this is the way I'd like to work. Now, do you find that your patients have um, a difficult time implementing these changes? Um, I know that other countries are different, but for example, in the United States, in order to see a doctor, you know, that um, practices metabolic health is is all private. So there's a lot of people who cannot afford it. And then even for people who can um, afford the, the, uh, the doctor or, you know, another practitioner, there's also the challenge of how many hours we work, you know, being able to implement these changes is, is rather difficult difficult it's a there's a lot of barriers to entry yeah. yes so I, I i know two countries spain and ireland in this moment better in spain i can tell you i i know very well spain the practice in spain and for me it's been to be very difficult to find one colleague medical doctor or or pediatrician or to to motivate this doctor to to try to work on low carb keto diets or metabolic health because it's not at all spread this information in Spanish in and in the in the Spanish general practice. In Spain, it's more common the nutritional therapist or some coaches to offer that, but disconnected absolutely from the public system. Uh, this is not offered at all. And I, I my and I'm working to try to to join some colleagues and start uh, doing some research. Some projects research is showing that the same results that, for example, David, David Darwin is getting in UK about uh, remission of diabetes type two, we can get the same results sure in Spain, but uh, it's very difficult in Spain. Uh, no, no, not general practitioner is is doing that. Maybe some of them, not not known, so of course, a few of, of them, but it's not is not a. a, a, a well, it's not easy, and I like to offer a private practice with people, uh, but uh, affordable, affordable. Okay, I I, I like to, but uh, and and then give tools to people in Spanish, and I, I I like to to have like a website, blog, LinkedIn profile, social network, at least to spread all this this uh, so good uh, people working in the world on that. And just tell uh, this is the what they are doing. This is the science is behind that. I think it's uh, just uh, know that uh, in Spanish, uh, like uh, translated or adapted by a family doctor like me. 
in Ireland is is, is the same, but the Ireland is the US is a English speaking country, and of, of course everything that is done in UK, in the States, in Australia uh, uh, is can you do it? Can you easier do in Ireland? Because uh, the, if you show them a video or a or a, a website in the UK, is is like like more oh they are doing there. So, uh, but uh, and so uh, I I think for me is uh, I practice general practice in Ireland, and I like I'm starting to practice uh, telemedicine, online medicine from Ireland in Spain, and I love also to 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 work in Ireland in in metabolic health, but uh, I, I it's, it's not going to be easy because uh, people for many years for many decades the people are really needing the the change in lifestyle are in the 40s 50s 60s and they have been for decades being told other messages and so it's like shocking like shocking if you tell them about uh well or reduce so much your carbohydrates even forget about bread forget about pizza breast, pasta rice for a while and they say oh uh, i I've, I've been told other things so uh well um I think uh, it's we need everything. We need to uh, organize the science. The science is powerful now. Organize the, the clinical practices on that. In, there are many, many good experience in many countries. We need to spread the news in a, in the right way. Uh, we need also to organize good clinical settings, uh, virtual, hybrid, face to face, and also we need to participate in research. <laughs> and so. Uh, we have loads of work ahead. <laughs> I had, yes. Yes, absolutely. Tell me a little bit more about what you saw in um, India, because I know that the increase in type 2 diabetes in India has been massive. Um, and there's a big struggle with that. So how is that effort going? What are they doing? And um, India what are the results there? India is another world. It's fascinated, fascinating. I don't know why. It's one of the countries I went when I was just twenty because I had a, a uncle missionary, Catholic missionary, and I went to, to to stay with him. And then I went back because I was working for an NGO in leprosy in at the early, in the in the late nineties in management. And this is a, it's a familiar country for me, and and um, amazing. My son went one year to work in the Spanish. Uh, the embassy last year. I went last year, and uh, and it was funny because I I could meet the low carb community in India, and I'm still fascinated what I found there. Absolutely fascinated. So, uh, because it's a country without a health system, they don't have a health system. Uh, only the public system is for half of the population who can't afford nothing, and the other half uh, they have to to spend their own savings in they if they get sick so it's completely different uh, in spain if you get sick you will have a doctor you will have a nurse you can go to a hospital and it's all included in your universal uh, health uh, in india you start uh, you start spending your your savings if, if you get sick in the 50s so uh, lifestyle medicine is has a, has a huge future in, in in countries like india and and on the other hand uh, uh, in Spain, it is also regulated. So you are a family doctor. You have uh, the endocrinologists in hospital, the cardiologists in hospital, the nephrologists in hospitals. They follow the guidelines, and maybe if you prescribe or you give some guidelines, you need to discuss with them. In India, is uh, 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 people with uh, with very simple training courses. They are already uh, reverting diabetes much more than many endocrinologists in, 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 in the Western in the Western world because and of course diabetes is, is I think is a mix of the of course uh, carbohydrate intake and insulin resistance as of course low uh, in low low income countries and the, like India very bad quality flavors very bad calorie quality uh, seed oils so inflammation plus insulin resistance uh, is uh, is a disaster. And affecting a lot of metabolic health. If you are interested, I can talk. I can tell you about maybe my my next trip to India and the people I'm going to 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 meet in Bangalore, working already in metabolic mind. 
Yeah, absolutely. Go ahead, because I think a lot of our audience would be interested in learning what's going on and perhaps, you know, joining the efforts in that community. Yeah, so what's what's so so fascinating, so so good to because I, I, I was in a in a conference with David Anwin talking to him and I told him I'm I going to go to India. He told me, Oh, yeah, you have this email of this person, Sachin Gariya Iyengar. Yes, and, and uh, I, I sent a message to him. I was um, I was was so good. They met me in a in a in a hotel in Mumbai. I came in from all around India, four different persons involved in the low carb community, and wow, I just start to feel the the the, the strength. I took him, you can you can follow all the Indian movement. They are they are they are they are powerful. I think in low carb, I think the the most promised uh, community, and uh, while the Sachin Gara Jengar is based in Mumbai. He comes from the pharmaceutical industry, but has, has realized himself uh, his, his own history is from type 2 diabetes, remission, through low carb lifestyle, and now is an excellent coach doing great things, trained by Nutrition Network, uh, the, the American American uh, training uh, in, low, in, in low carb. And, and uh, Anup Singh is, the, is another person well, already they started more than ten years ago with a with a I don't remember exactly the name now I can I can double check and I can send you later. They have ten years of experience with a wonderful movement in low carb in India, and uh, and uh, I think it's the the many people in the world need to know what's going on in India really. And uh, the other, the other person is, is called Poshini. Poshini is a is a is a, a coach in Bangalore. And uh, I think I, th- I, I think his her history is so interesting because her mother has mental serious had mental health issues. I don't know if she's happy to if I tell that here. Just tell you that uh, she has massively improved just reducing the seed, the uh, inflammatory seed oils and reducing the bad quality flavors uh, 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 bread and and and. Uh, and uh, and less rice and, and changing because they eat and even in India uh, they are uh, vegetarians many of them just uh, just eat dairy as as as, as an animal source and uh, the massive improvement of of her mother uh, changing the diet uh, has encouraged her to create a a center in, in Bangalore for mental health and metabolic health where they are doing great things. Uh, I'm very happy to to tell you that next month of April I will visit her again uh, because uh, I've started to be involved in some in some projects in in India. I'd love to participate in projects in India. Uh, I I hope I, I I will be able to do. And uh, maybe he, she 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 has started a podcast. I think you can perfectly interview her, or because she has started her own podcast, and because she she uh, she will be involved in in, in spreading the the message. And uh, definitely, India is another world. Uh, is so energetic, is so so massive population, and uh, where things are are different. I, I'm just starting to be in touch with them, and uh, but I can tell you uh, the place where you can get faster results with less uh, investment, uh, maybe countries as India, as India where. Where, uh, mm, for example, I, I was talking to Sasingari Ayengar told me, I am offering people the, mm, I know they are bipolar or depressive um, for many years. And I see how they maybe start to, to go out home when they are, they are for some weeks in a keto diet <laughs> or, or things like that. Uh, that, of course, is not, uh, uh, I, I, uh, mm, of course, there are many other things involved. Uh, Around the mental health, this is not only this 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 metabolic uh, exclusively, but uh, this I'm sure sure is is, is relevant, and um, and I've seen there are even some people like uh, working with Poshini. They are carnivore yogis, <laughs> some carnivore yogis. So they are uh, many yogis are vegetarians, but even there are some ca- some many carnivores in India in, in a country where there is also an also, the the religious situation. The if you eat some some ones don't eat even eggs. The other only eggs and dairy and and so I think we have a lot to 
to learn because they get very good results, not with street keto diets because they are, because of the religion, for example. And uh, I'm also, but also it's not so, I think that the, the system is not so powerful like in other countries to control what everybody does. <laughs> and so I think they are very creative, very creative and the, and the, the energy of India is, is different. Yeah, that will be interesting to see, you know, how fast uh, that tide can turn. Because like you said, there's no interference from, you know, the massive regulatory bodies. And um, it's probably easier in that sense, although I'm sure there are other limitations that they face. Um, but if sure. they can have uh, these interventions from the get-go, um, then it can definitely, we can definitely see fast results, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, also I... I, I really def I definitely want to 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 be in touch with them and, and follow what they are, what they are doing. I, I love to I love them to to come to to Europe. Uh, I think they are, they have many things to 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 show us. Yeah, that'd be amazing. So you'll be back there um, in April. Yes, I'm planning to go back to India in April, uh, back to Bangalore, and uh, Poshini has offered me an interview in, in her podcast. I've told her uh, I'd love to to do this interview, but face to face. They are in the in their studio. Oh, wonderful! Yeah, that'll that'll be fun, I'm sure. So, anything else that you would like to tell the audience in regards to metabolic health? Any message to the doctors listening on how they can improve um, the health of their patients? Um, anything else that you'd like to say before we go? Uh, I think uh, we should believe in the lifestyle. Uh, lifestyle changes. Uh, and lifestyle is what is, is making many many people get sick, and is the way many people can 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 get uh, remission of of many problems. Uh, I think uh, we we should like just enjoy learning that. I think we should be open to check the science around the last few years in 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 uh, and of course all related with. Uh, microbiome and but but also all related with uh, with macronutrients or related with the with the, the I think we have the same questions but maybe we we need to be open to different answers <laughs> uh just to be open I think just to be open and consider that uh, that the people we who are involved in this uh, in this kind of movements or 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 new or new ways of working is because we we'd love to 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 be able to have the, the right tools for the people to uh, to be the owners of their own health, I think uh, 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 I think this is this is the the, the message uh, I can I can give to be open and uh, and be able to to have different answers for the same questions. Wonderful! Thank you so much for being with us today, Doctor Kessely. Oh, it's a real pleasure, Isabel. Thank you. Thanks for joining us on this episode of Ancestral Health today. We hope you enjoyed our discussion on how evolutionary insights can inform modern health practices. Be sure to subscribe to our podcast to catch future episodes.